Meanwhile, corporate tax rate on average in this country is only 12%. On paper, it's 35, but between all the breaks and the banning and everything, and of course the huge problem of tax evasion, overseas, overseas squirreling away assets, it, corporations are by and large paying a lot less tax than any of us. Our aggregate rate, when we add it all up, 35, 40% 40, 40 of our income is going effectively to subsidize through the medium of corporate welfare and defense spending. Huge companies which provide very little or nothing to us, whose CEOs pocket billions of dollars, who are signed up for enormous bonuses just for continuing to exist. So this is a patently unfair system, but because the political superstructure is bought out by these people who've rigged it this way, it's going to be a big, big task to try and shift it, even with the medium of elections. So, 20 minutes to solve it. What do we do? <laughs> I think I'd ask you. I think you gave a really great analysis of the problem. The real question is, what's the solution? Well, I think a primary step is uh, like uh, abolishing sales taxes. Immigration. We still need people for immigration right by me. Because immigration. It's a, it's a flat tax. It's actually regressive because a lot of luxury items that great. only the most wealthy can buy aren't um, aren't aren't uh, aren't taxed. Um, and so sales tax really is the most regressive form of taxation in this country, um, and is not necessary for tax revenue. Um, and it's, it definitely like, hurts minorities and the poor more than uh, it barely affects the rich. The first thing anyone's going to say to them is what you want to anyway. So what's a good answer to that? Because I don't think that's the problem I struggle with. It's like, abolish this tax, abolish that tax, but then where does the money come from? So well, I can tell you where the money comes from because, as I shoot myself, I'm rich. And we rich people, we don't pay taxes like you regular people. You, the federal government gave me personally fifty thousand dollars for free. It was a low income housing stop scheme, raising but I took the no risk. Wage, I did no work, and I ended up with fifty thousand dollars for free. Wage which was the rule at the time. So my my view of the whole thing is the best way to attack right. it is to point out to everybody, including our Republicans, that no, we don't want to give away free money to rich people. We rich people are fine. Stop giving us free money. That's the way I've been attacking it. With, yes, with all due respect, I think what he said about the problem, actually everybody knows that. I mean, uh, it's almost preaching to the choir. It's really a question of power. We are preaching like, to the choir because exactly. we're all rich. We added a green infrastructure well, group over here. here. The rich, everybody In knows the system. rich don't pay their fair share of taxes. Right. I don't but it's yeah. not even really the rich that's the really horrible part of it because corporate tax rate, what they're taking out is you're taking out hundreds of thousands, maybe a few million, and that's fine. They're taking out billions and trillions that are gone from the economy permanently, okay? Because they're somewhere, who knows, Swiss Bank, I don't know, the Cayman Islands, I think the Bermuda has similar laws like that in some of the other islands. Um, you know, uh, here's my thing. Money is a figment of our collective imagination. So how do we make it work for everybody so that nobody has to starve since it's all just a system that we created for ease of trade in the first place? So how do we bring it back to ease of trade? And that will help us to figure out how an appropriate taxation system would work for everyone across the board. And it did work for many years. Okay. Like something like 50 or you something? I jumped in and I probably didn't make my point very well. I'm what sorry. I'm trying to say is I think everyone except a hermit on the mountain is aware of the problem. The ta uh, Senator, ex Senator Simpson, a right winger, said the tax code isn't 80,000 pages long to help the working people. In other words, the power structure has set up the tax code. Everyone knows it's unfair. The question, uh, for educating more people will do nothing because they already know. The question is, what kind of power moves can we organize to do to change the equation, to take back power to the well, people? One thing is we can demand but, but Back and forth. I'd like to make sure that we're getting all the voices in from this end of the table as well. So let's uh, open up some space for everyone. I'd like to respond to that. 
What we're doing here, what brought us here, is this random guy who happens to have survived long enough, wonderfully. We've seen folks who've spoken up, killed most of us when, when they when they have when they move toward making effective change. So he's here now with us, and, but I mean under his name, we're here together. The, the move to, 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 to respond to all the issues here is to put people in, in power who can make make the changes. Okay, that's why we're here. We're, we're, we're actually here for thousands of people, or millions of people. And for any of us who happen to have the talent, the time, the interest, in any, at any level of government, to step in and take control. Because that's all that will make the difference. Now, the discussion here, it's good, we're here, I'm listening, we're learning. But to take positions, in, in political positions, and to support those who support us. I think it comes down to simplifying the tax code. With 80,000 pages, it's just too complicated. But at the same time, we need to realize what, what are core issues that make the center of living so high. Part of the thing is huge subsidies that the government pays to big corporations. For example, you take the uh, uh, cause of Imperial Sugar. They're a huge sugar company down in Florida. One company supports Republicans, one other supports Republicans, one of Democrats. Together they have a tariff on sugar. In fact, American sugar is even cheaper than Haitian sugar in Haiti. Because of that, high fructose corn syrup is so much better because the price of sugar is three times as expensive. At the same time, it's more, it's, it's cheaper to make the high fructose corn syrup, to go through the process of making corn to high fructose corn syrup, than just to make that corn. Because that process is subsidized. 25% of our economy is get driven through government pay. It's not sustainable. And at the end of the day, where's the money going to? For example, look at the veterans. Look at the veterans department and look at the education department. We pay more money in the veterans departments for just pensions alone than we give to the educational department. And we're not even treating our veterans well. So it comes down to asset allocation. Decrease subsidies to big governments. Transfer that elsewhere. I'll just put, jump in very briefly and also note there's a real impact of, the, of this corn subsidy thing on everyday politics because the campaign trick starts in New Hampshire and then Iowa and so whenever when all the candidates go to Iowa they have to keep the corn farmers happy and so they have to say I'm not going to do anything about subsidies it distorts the whole conversation yeah, I just wanted to say that it seems like, taking off from what you said that it seems like it's more it's more basic that um, that people have to make just make choices and decisions based on human values and I don't know how we're going to change things around that you know that there are people that don't think that other people are as important as money and so it's and it, and it can be in politics it can be in any organization I mean it doesn't matter where you are so I'm not in the government I work for, in a healthcare agency and just every you know, everything is a decision, and I can sometimes say something that will make a little bit of a difference. So I guess I think that's what we should be doing. I don't know how to change it all, but it seems like if everybody had a different philosophy, that would go a long way. And I don't know why big corporations or really rich people do what they do. I don't think they're bad. I don't know why they do it. Answer? I had something to say about, uh, like, pragmatic ways to gain more money. I think another way that we can um, make up the money we, we, we lose by taking away sales tax is increase the estate tax. Because um, right now the federal estate tax, you don't pay taxes on the first 5.3 million in assets that you get give to your, your uh, children. Or, so I think that if we increase the estate tax, we could level, we could give people more level footing to start with and make up for the money we, we lose by taking away flat taxes like sales tax. Yeah, um, I would say one thing we can do is reverse the whole job creator myth because it's the rich people that claim that they're the job creators where it's proven with economics that they're not. That people only create jobs out of like bare necessity when they have to, when they can't function as a company unless they have more employees. And it's like the last resort that they don't want to do. And so it's consumers that drive the economy and the more money people have in their pockets to spend, then that drives the economy and you need more workers and you need higher paying jobs and more competitive jobs. And uh, yeah, if we can change the narrative, that's not job creators are the wealthy, but it's the job creators are the consumers. And yeah. There's a great TED talk about that. 
I mean, why do we believe these things? It's like there's all these things conditioning. around that we believe. That aren't Societal true. conditioning. It's how you keep control of masses and amounts of people. And this is how, how it's been for the last 40 years. I live with someone who is totally not conditioned to not say me automatically. Think of himself only, think of his needs only. Does not understand that we are part of a much larger structure. And if we don't all work together, it fails. You know, the reason why they built those pyramids and made them last forever so that we can still see them is so that you can understand there really needs to be a tiny amount at the top and a huge amount at the bottom or everything collapses inside of you, right? Maybe that speaks to democracy. I think everything is related to making sure more people vote for things that they believe. Because if you think, why does everyone think that taxes are terrible, but they're so terrible, it's because we're not in charge of our government, even though we're supposed to be. So I think anything that we can do to make ourselves more in charge is going to help all of the other problems with the I don't mean that. Because things didn't used to be like this. Uh, when Eisenhower was president, there was a 90% top marginal tax rate. And th things have been getting cut year after year after year. I remember the Reagan tax cuts. I remember, I remember the Clinton tax cuts. Every time we say the word reform, by the way, it means they're cutting something from something that we need and giving more to the people who already have plenty. So what what is our... We're all a relatively young group here. What, what do we think that process was? How did we get to a U.S. where you could tax the rich at 90%? And how do we fall away from that? Honestly, like a lot of it, you can't educate people who aren't listening, but if you make it stuff, they can't help them listen. Like make things really public, make things really talked about, then, like, I think it's, you know the video that's been going around Facebook, I don't know how many of you were on Facebook, the video of the people who did the analysis, the economic analysis, that said that um, most policies are only affected Uh, overlords won't allow them to say. Maybe on the TV, but the internet's different. Right, but that's why I'm saying social media is so important. Exactly, yeah. I mean, like, you, like the, one of the speakers was saying, though, like 25% of young people vote, but if you ask them, I'm pretty sure most people I know would say, I don't want the rich to, I don't want to give them money, I don't like the tax policies, but also 75% of them aren't voting. So it goes back to that person's point about getting political leaders in power, but it also kind of goes back to getting young people to vote. Um, I think there's something very important in there, in, in a couple of things that you've said, because um, it's with, with the closure of mental health facilities, people felt like they were isolated. And something that feeds into what you were saying about how we are raised is to, is to feel like we are on our own in the world. We're on our own fe feeling like this. We're on our own feeling like we're the only people who think the system is broken. We're raised to think that everything is about the individual and the group and the groups never matter. I went to college uh, in Washington, D.C., and I studied economics. I was, I was a physics major, but I took some economic courses. Never once heard the name Karl Marx. But, and then I went to, um, to Britain for my post-grad degree, and everyone who's done economics in any measure in the UK has been exposed to Marx and to collectivist theories, people like Stuart. So it, it's been... Directly and Smith was a collectivist yeah. in a yes. lot of ways. Yes. I mean, Smith was into the labor hard, theory right? of value. He wasn't into this idea that prices come just from the market. But we are very, very deliberately being taught that this neoliberal philosophy of it's everyone for themselves, it's dog and dog, and that really is good when we get down to it. I think that's slowly changing. I, I think that, um, I mean, probably until the mid 2000s, we were still in that, you know, Fukuyama. Uh, Just so you know, like, five minute warning. I'm the same thing with the, de the Democrats. Even if you're a pro-environmentalist on the Democrat side, you sell to Big Pharma and vice versa. What we need to do is make the common person's vote matters. At the end of the day, in the first past the vote, first past the 
first, past the post voting system, yeah. minority parties like the Greens and the Socialists will never get a chance. We need to set a system where there is proportional representation. So if the Socialists or the Greens get, let's say, 3% of the vote, they can have that representation so that they can have access to capital pools. So they can. Yeah. Because now, now it doesn't matter. What really matters if you're an aspiring politician, join the Democrats, join the Greens. We're just, just too tough. And because party, poly, party loyalty means so much, it's just so heartbreaking. We do that. need to start wrapping up, and I want you to think if you want to give, be the person who gives the minute share back. Uh, so um, my whole take back on all of this is, you know, the, the discussion is really interesting, but the practical things that we can actually do vis-a-vis -vis this, my, my approach at all of this is I never say tax the rich more. The only thing I ever say is cut the subsidies, cut the deductions, cut the loopholes, just make them pay what they owe today. They owe approximately twice, we rich people owe approximately twice what we pay in taxes. And if we do half of that, we would be rolling in okay. money. So that's my approach. What other approaches can we in have to be little, effective, little minute, convince other people that they want to come up to the front this to happen? And give us a back. Thank you. Who wants to give the share back? I think you should. I like yeah. what you said. I'm, I'm shooting, so I don't want to. And I want to record it too. I already recorded the speeches, so. Uh, you want, oh, you can't do it? Well, why won't you? Why don't you do it? You are very effective in your getting your points across. Second. <laughs> you second that? All those in favor? Yeah. All those in favor? We volunteered. Okay. Sorry, this is what happens in the democracy. We volunteered for something. I think you're Thank awesome. You. Thank you. And exactly what they need to hear. Yeah. So, what are you going to say? Say it over here. Um. What we talk about in your group is the issue of taxes. We feel that there's several major problems in our system. Um, we're not going to say cut taxes for the rich. What we're probably going to say is cut down subsidies. Subsidies take care of, like the U.S. government takes care of 25% of our economy. That's trillions and trillions of dollars that can be spent towards equalizing social inequality. Focusing on those issues such as cutting that, taking care of cutting down the 80,000 tax code. How is the CPA supposed to understand that? It's impossible. We want to make the system fairer for the individual so that everyone can have a fair chance at having a great and successful life in this country.